Hello friends and welcome to Adventures in Pixie Land. We are uh, doing Bible study. We are in the Niv. We are in 2 Timothy. Uh, we're going to be doing verses 1 through 18. Chapter 1 verses 1 through 18. Um, so in timeline this letter comes after uh, the letter to Titus. It is another pastoral letter i.e. a personal letter from Paul to Timothy again. Uh, yesterday we finished 1 Timothy's, um, so you should be able to find that. Now, some context. The letter to Titus was written before this one. We haven't gotten to the letter to Titus, so if you're sort of like, what letter to Titus? Uh, the letter to Titus is written actually before this one, okay? So this one actually comes after. Paul is been, you know, in arrest, arrested and waiting for trial before the Roman Emperor for quite some time. And, and at some points he was able to leave and travel because we know that from the letters and stuff. And then eventually not able to. And that's because of the turmoil that was going on in Rome during that time. So at, when we're at this place at Paul, where Paul's at in his life, the Roman Emperor is Nero. Now, I don't know if you know anything about the history of the Roman empires or know anything about Nero, but he's the one that's like, Nero played the fiddle while Rome burned, is a phrase. Okay, now, uh, Nero, 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 I don't know why I said Nero like that, I'm sorry. Uh, Nero, well, maybe because of the brain thing, I'll get to that. Nero uh, actually created the profession that we call firefighters. It was uh, under him in the earlier parts of his career before the disease got to his brain. Nero had neurological problems, and that's why that happened. I think the suspicion was syphilis. Now, um, that was not uncommon for that time frame because, you know, we barely have a full comprehension of it now about all these different types of diseases, let alone that. Yes, that's a sexually transmitted disease. Nobody was being careful. This is long before we have any of these protections that we currently have. Um, but it does make it basically an inflammation of the brain. Like your brain is swelling in your head. So you don't have any good judgment anymore. It's an infection of the brain. That's what it creates. So it's like your brain is on fire. And then basically, you know, it doesn't really explode or anything. But the infection takes over and it's your central processing system. So imagine it as, think of it as like syphilis is like getting a computer virus for your brain. It does the same thing that you know, a very malicious computer virus would do to your computer. Go through and eat up everything until it's just not possible, possible anymore and your computer is a brick. Right? In this case, your body becomes a brick. So Nero, Nero uh, dies in 68 AD. And this letter is written in 66 AD. Okay. And then when Nero dies, Rome will have four different emperors in one year. And then it'll go into the Vespian, uh, they want to call it an empire because it was Vespian and then his two sons. So first, you know, after Vespian dies, then it's Titus, and then uh, it's his son, other son, whose name I can't remember what the name is right now, but the younger brother. Titus is the older one. Titus is the, was the brother, uh, was the son that uh, took uh, Bernice, the daughter of uh, King Herod Agrippa. I think it was King Herod Agrippa the first, and it was her brother who was King uh, was King Herod Agrippa the second, that um, as a concubine. So context, okay. Um, so Second Timothy's, verse one. Remember, Timothy is his son, and this is what I'm saying. This is the end of Paul's life because Christians are being tortured in the Colosseum. We are in the era where people are getting eaten by lions. And that's considered entertainment for the masses. In fact, the idea of like the Circus Maximus is created and run during the time of Titus Vespian, that's their father, 
Titus and the, I think it's like Claudius or something like that. The younger son is who created the Circus Maximus. So, so you have a context of what's going on. Now, Colosseums himself were invented in before then. Spartacus was fighting in the Colosseums and that was uh, before then. So the idea of gladiators and fighting, I just, for the context, this is where Rome is. It's fun to watch people to fight to the death. It's fun to, you know, carve skin off of people as party favors. Look at this cruel thing we can do to them. It's like they're not humans anymore, and isn't that funny? That's where the world is. So Paul's about to die, and he knows it. And this is a letter to his, the, what it will be the closest thing to a son he would ever have. So, 2 Timothy, verse 1, chapter 1, verse 1. Paul an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, according to the promise of life that is Christ Jesus. To Timothy, my dear son, grace, mercy, and peace of God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. Encouragement to be faithful. I thank God, whom I serve, as my forefathers did. Encouragement to be faithful. I thank God whom I serve as my forefathers did with a clear conscience, as night and day I constantly remember you in my prayers. Recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy I have been reminded of your sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded now lives in you also. For this reason, I remind you to fan the flame, the gift of, to, to, right. for this reason, I remind you to fan into the flame fan into flame the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands like that's very awkward sounding uh, I'm encouraging you to stay faithful to fan the flames of your own faith within your heart I mean just very awkwardly for me anyway uh, verse 7 for God did not give us spirit of timidity ah but spirit of power, love, and self-discipline. I don't, timidity, I don't really like that. I like it, that's how I word it. What, what he's talking about, I was not born with a spirit of fear. I'm not afraid of almost anything. Like I would have to be in a very immediate mortal danger, physical, hey, I'm about to, I don't know, something, fall or something, and then I'll have a moment in which I, because I need to react. But when I'm starting out the the day, I'm not thinking about any task I have and assuming that it's going to fail. Uh, so being strong in the faith is real important in life. So do not live with a spirit of fear. It's not worth it. Everything's figure outable. So it's not really. Uh, verse 8. So do not be ashamed to testify about our Lord or ashamed of me as his prisoner. Uh, but join with me in suffering for the gospel by the power of God, who has saved us and called us to a holy life, not because of anything we have done, but because his own purpose and grace. This grace was given us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time. But it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Christ Jesus, who has destroyed death and brought, has brought life and immortality uh, to the light, to light through the gospel. He proved that, you know, God can raise somebody from the dead. Yeah. And of this gospel, I was appointed to a herald and to an apostle and a teacher. This is why I am suffering as I am. Yet I am not ashamed because I know whom I have believed and I am convinced that he 
is able to guard what I have entrusted to him for that day. He's not afraid to die for his faith. Um, when you're going to go running around in the world, trying to preach the faith and uplift and anchor the light and be positive towards others and all kinds of, you're going to have haters that come in. The opposition is hard at work trying to undo the anchoring of the light that you do. And if they can't get to you directly, they'll get to people around you. They'll get to situations around you. They'll art artificially create opportunities for additional stress. And you have to decide how you want to handle them. Do you want to handle them with faith or do you want to go back to your woundings and act out of character? So Paul's saying, I'm not afraid of the day I die because I know when I die, I, I'm going to him. He'll be there waiting for me. He'll be there to guide me. So there's no reason for me to fear death. Uh, verse 13, uh, what you have heard from me, keep as a pattern of sound teaching with faith and love in Christ Jesus. Guard the good deposit that was entrusted to you. Guard it with the help of the Holy Spirit who lives in us. You know that everyone in the province of Asia has deserted me, including Phygelus and Hormonogenes. They're really... Okay. May the Lord show mercy to the household of Onsorfer... Son one, I tell you, I'm just going to spell it for you. Uh, o N E S I P H O R U S. On surface, does that I mean that's yeah, forfis? That's forfis at the end. On surface, because he often refreshed me and was not ashamed of my chains. On the contrary, when he found I was in Rome. He searched hard for me until he found me. Oh, what a good friend. Even if he has a difficult name to say. For me anyway. May the Lord grant that he will find mercy from the Lord on that day. You know very well in how many ways he helped me in uh, Ephesus. Ephesus is where Paul, uh, sorry, Timothy is because he's the uh, pastor there. That's his church now. He keeps them in faith. So, remember, friends, when the day is being challenging, the more light you anchor, the more motivation the opposition has to try to stop you. So if they come in swinging, laugh at them. Because remember, they may be your Goliath. But no matter what's going on, if you're walking around in faith, then they're, in like the song I, I like to listen to, says, then they're standing in the shadow of the Almighty. And what good does their, you know, frustration energy do if they're standing in the shadow of the Almighty?